currently chair for community safety for two years, which I really, really enjoyed. I've done things in a different way. And I had the opportunity to apply for cabinet, and uh, which I am now uh, accepted to be in cabinet, which I'm very honored to be in cabinet. And I got the portfolio that I wasn't expecting at the beginning, but uh, I do enjoy it. It's something that I've been doing for years, working with local community groups, uh, working with the voluntary sector is something that I do on a daily basis. And doing stuff around the borough is enjoyable. The, we've got a lot of heritage and culture, which I, I enjoy a lot, taking my kids out and about in the borough and the parks, which is part of the borough that I grew up in, that I lived in for the last 30 years. Very enjoyable. And I would like to thank Danny for giving me the opportunity. Well, we're very glad to have you, Adele. So uh, thank you. And uh, we're also now being joined uh, by Councillor Jackie Smith, who is our lead councillor for community safety. Uh, welcome, Jackie. Um, so, um, we'll start with Adele. Uh, Jackie, I'm afraid you're on mute. You need to uh, unmute yourself there. Um, we'll start uh, with a question. I'm on now. We'll start with a question about parks, uh, really, for Adele. Um, and this question, Adele, comes from Theresa May. Now, I'm not sure if it's the Theresa May, or a resident called Theresa May. Um, but uh, the question is, um, if you're concerned about uh, playgrounds within parks, um, and I guess people using them, uh, will we be sealing off playgrounds um, to stop the spread of coronavirus? Well, uh, thank you so much, Teresa, for your question. I, I, can, I, I can confirm that we have sealed off all our parks there for since the beginning of the coronavirus outbreak. There's certain individuals that are going around, you know, taking down fences and still using that without consent and we are trying our best to go back and reseal it due to staff shortages. But since the government guidelines have changed now, we are looking to reopen playgrounds as soon as possible. Just working out a safer strategy to get it all open and up and running again for all our children and young people. Thank you. And I guess just to really stress, as we move into um, what's hopefully the final phases uh, of lockdown now, we would still ask people uh, to follow all of the rules which have been set out. Uh, it's really important that we maintain uh, that social distancing which has been stipulated and particularly uh, asking everyone to follow those basic hygiene uh, methods of washing your hands uh, and helping stop the spread of the virus and particularly uh, so that we avoid uh, any uh, second wave which I know that one of us want. Now, Adele, also we've got a number of questions, um, also uh, again from Theresa May. Uh, and Theresa has asked now about the grass uh, not being cut. Uh, now, will you be cutting the grass personally, or are you going to get someone uh, out and about uh, to uh, get this grass trimmed? I, I would love to cut the grass personally, but unfortunately, I'm not an expert. I don't even have a garden. I'll go out and join the parks of our borough on a daily basis. Uh, due to COVID-19, our schedules had to be completely restructured due to a lot of staff being, being shielding and off sick. But we are going around catching up. Our staff are working extremely hard to go around cut all the grass across the borough. And uh, if you do see anything that you are, want us to look into more details, more than happy to trace it with me. Uh, but us, our new schedule will be up and running as soon as possible. And I would uh, just stress as well that actually uh, longer grass has many significant environmental benefits from biodiversity uh, and actually we've had a lot of positive comments from people uh, who've seen a range um, of different uh, things flying about and uh, living uh, in, in that grass um, sort of wildlife, which would not have been uh, would not have been possible if it had all been uh, cut down so actually um, we, we do think that this is a really uh, important part of our biodiversity work. Also, we are looking for places to plant wildflowers uh, and lots of people have really given us um, some positive feedback uh, about the work that we've done so far. Um, we've got six sites identified uh, around the borough already. Uh, we'll make an announcement about those shortly. Um, if you are interested in planting some wildflower seeds and creating a more diverse environment, then let us know. Now, Jackie, um, your role is enforcement. So, Although Adele's looking after parks, um, could you tell us what the team have been up to to make sure people are using our parks uh, safely and securely uh, during the lockdown? And whether you have any advice for residents uh, at this time? Um, I think it's been, been a 
very difficult time for everybody. We have had, um, uh, sadly, it's kind of been disbanded. Being the earlier days of lockdown all over Easter on the May Bank holidays, we had what was running something called Operation Boundary. So we had um, our, our normal service people who do enforcement out, but seconded into that, but led by um, safer spaces were uh, parking wardens that were on furlough, um, tenancy enforcement officers that weren't working. So we had a pretty effective operation out in parks and town centres and you know places of concern that were uh, on a radio link and uh, a mobile unit going around. So it was fairly, fairly um, robust uh, and I suppose the most telling figure that I can say to you is that on the Saturday of the Easter Bank holiday weekend uh, our team made contact with 1,400 people to remind them about social distancing. Uh, we also put in quite a lot of physical measures because you know people weren't always listening to what they were being told which were around the Cutty Sark Gardens and as Adele said in lots of parks but sadly as fast as we fenced off things and put tape around things people came in and tore it down again so it has been a, an ongoing job uh, what advice would I give to residents is, is um, please use our parks they are a wonderful resource um, and and there to be enjoyed by everybody but please you know try to maintain social distancing even though we're told that it's lesser now we know if we're gonna um, stop a second peak we all need to behave sensibly and I would put out a second plea to people that if you are using the parks and the litter bins are overflowing just please take it home with you don't leave it all over the parks um, because that's been a real problem as well and just on the grass cutting bit if I might say I've had lots of comments from residents about some of the areas that they value have, where it's grown wild and there are wild flowers you probably remember we planted a lot of poppy seeds to commemorate the end of World War One, um, and a lot of those have been self-seeded and are turning up in places and look quite beautiful. So, you know, I do think that it's right and proper to look at some areas that we, we might want to grow wild. Me. I can't hear you now. You're muted, Danny. Okay, Danny, great. Danny, you're muted. Yeah, I should be off, off of mute now. I think hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, sorry about that. So thank you uh, to those. Um, I've got some live questions now uh, coming through linked to that. Um, Councillor Davis has sent one about Elton Police Station, but I told him to wait until tonight. <laughs> that is a regular topic of conversation. Uh, for you both and uh, Councillor Davis um, just to say Councillor Smith has missed these exchanges in the lockdown and looks forward uh, to continuing them at the uh, first available opportunity so she can tell you about all the fantastic work uh, that she's doing with the Mayor of London to make London and Greenwich a safer place. Um, Sheldon uh, Allen, uh, one of our young borough activists is uh, asking about where wildflowers are in the borough uh, and Sel Rollins, uh, who's one of our residents, would like to uh, join you, Adele, to perhaps plant some wildflower seeds. So when we have those sites identified, um, we'll put out some community notification and uh, the more help, uh, the merrier. Uh, now I'm going to hold on to the next question. Now, Jackie, um, you're responsible for parking enforcement. Yeah, uh, now, sorry. Um, has parking enforcement uh, commenced in the borough? It has. Um as people probably appreciate that through lockdown, we had a very easy phase on parking. We, we clearly had lots of traffic wardens furloughed. Um, you know, it wasn't safe for people to be out there um, until we knew more about the virus. Uh, plus, most people were at home. So, you know, there was very little movement of cars in the early days. So we took a decision to issue permits to essential staff. NHS staff, um, other public service staff, council staff, so that they could travel by car and not public transport as advised by the government. 
Um, but we are slowly moving back into full enforcement mode. So actually we are probably there now. We started on the um, 5th of June, I think it was, um, but we started very gently by um, issuing warnings rather than fines because we knew people needed to get used to the fact that we were back in force with, with, with issuing tickets. Um, but we're now in issuing ticket mode. So enforcement is a little bit slow because we haven't got everybody back. We've got um, you know, some, some wardens still shielding um, for, for health reasons, but we are back in enforcement mode. So things should be pretty much back to normal very soon. Okay, thank you very much. Um, we have uh, another question about parks, um, which we will just pass over for a detailed answer. It's from, um, it's from Deborah Harrington, uh, who's involved in Queen's Cross Park. Um, Deborah, thank you for uh, letting us know uh, about uh, the overgrown grass there. And, and I'm glad that we'll be getting some uh, staff down there this week uh, to help, uh, help out. Um, and also, just on my other screen has popped up, uh, is a message to say that we're now officially in a heat wave. Uh, and that actually, obviously, we hope that people who may be enjoying the parks in the hotter weather uh, take the appropriate uh, precautions uh, to make sure that they stay safe. Um, I've got a question here from Mervyn in Plumstead uh, about the Slade Pond. Um, apparently, the Slade Pond still has a rocking pool in it, and many people don't even know uh, that it's there. And it really is a sort of beautiful hidden part uh, of the borough. Uh, can the council have a look? Uh, uh, some re-landscaping uh, to see uh, if more of the pond can be appreciated. Yes, thank you, Danny. Uh, so still on, regarding the Slade Pond, I can confirm that Grant's, men, uh, Grant's maintenance team have already started uh, working on there, working on the steps leading down to the pond, cutting the over hedges and making sure that things are maintained nice and clean and do re-landscaping as well. So that's in the process now, it's in the hands of the, our grand maintenance teams that are on it. Okay, thank you. Um, we've also got some questions about Woolwich Cemetery um, as well. Uh, and I know that there's people raising concerns uh, that there's overgrown um, weeds and not enough uh, rubbish clearance. Um, just to say, obviously, a lot of our staff uh, services uh, have been massively uh, impacted by the COVID crisis um, and obviously many of our cemeteries have been uh, actually closed uh, to visitors um, during this crisis um, and, and we will be doing all that we can uh, to get maintenance uh, back up uh, and running. Uh, now moving from parks and cemeteries uh, into libraries, so uh, Adele are we going to be open for business on the 4th of July? We will be open for business from the 6th of July as we are working closely with BETA to make sure that they got the risk assessment in place and up to standards and with a cleaning regime that's going to be done on a regular every time people are in and out. The, it, it won't be the same as it used to be with the numbers. The numbers are going to be slightly much, much lower. But hopefully as government guidelines eases, the numbers will be increasing our local libraries. And hopefully we will be starting with six of our major libraries to be opening from the 6th of July. Great. And I know uh, the question comes from uh, John Killick, who's asking why we can open Sainsbury's and not a library. Uh, well, sadly, John, uh, the government have been very clear uh, about which buildings have to close uh, and which buildings uh, don't. And obviously supermarkets have been deemed uh, an essential service. Um, and obviously we will make sure that we do everything we can uh, to get our libraries open. We're extremely disappointed in the news yesterday uh, that leisure centres won't be able to reopen. Uh, it seems very bizarre that you can go uh, for a pint uh, and not go uh, to a gym class. Um, and I really hope that that is uh, reviewed as soon as possible. And also that our swimming pools are able to be reopened because on a day like today, um, you know, the chlorinated water at the Lido would be a pretty good uh, antidote to COVID-19 as well as uh, actually uh, proving uh, a great place of relief in this hot weather. Um, so we hope that the government will seriously uh, look into, uh, into that uh, as well. Now the next question, um, Jackie we've got one here on uh, parking enforcement um, and I guess all I'd say really is um, 
uh, this question is uh, in Charlton and he's saying that he doesn't see any enforcement. Do we have enforcement in Charlton? We do. Um, clearly the answer is the same as before, that it's all been very lax during... Um, and a lot of people say nobody ever enforces here. It's a bit like when people say that we never see a police officer. Um, just because you haven't seen them, it doesn't mean to say uh, they're not there. I mean, I'm happy to get the figures over the last year for how many um, tickets have been issued in, in Hicking Close and Gallon Close. But clearly there's, there's, there's not just the CPZ problem. There is the problem that on match days, which at the moment shouldn't be a problem because they're not, they're not crowded matches. They're just matches without a, um, an audience, um, unless you do it on Sky TV. But um, clearly we do have to look around, I think, in general, um, particularly with all the stuff that's going on in Morris Walk and some of the displacement of the parking. Um, about what we do on Charlton match days and, and how we need to, to get that out. We are we started before uh, lockdown um, reconfiguring the shift patterns for, for enforcement officers over three so that there is a, a shift that works up till 10 o'clock. But we do, um, you know, regularly when there's an evening match, put people on, on overtime during that. But I think we do have to look at Charlton match days um, with a bit more vigour to make sure that residents aren't inconvenienced. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, okay, we've got some other points coming in here now. Um, so we've got uh, some points about uh, people asking about uh, the Glyndon and Kibbutz by-elections. All by-elections are uh, as a result of the coronavirus crisis and those uh, that is laid out in legislation. Uh, we've also been asked here uh, about what plans we have to clean up the waterways uh, near Deptford Creek. Now, actually, I believe they're managed by the Environment Agency uh, and not the Council, but we can uh, definitely pick that one up. Uh, we've got a question here from Shola, who says, uh, will you have safe public spaces for older vulnerable people to visit if they need to be out in the community, uh, especially as it gets warmer? Um, well, obviously, um, we do have a number of community centres and they should be reopening uh, on the 4th of July uh, as well, Adele, as, as I understand that. Oh, sorry, Adele, you're on mute there. Oh. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so we have got a plan to uh, reopen community centres from the 4th of July. As I said earlier on, it's all about getting our risk assessment in place, which is with all government guidelines to be met. And uh, we are working with community centres to work on that with them and make it easier for them to open and uh, open safely. Okay, perfect. Um, we've also, uh, Jackie, been asked here by David Scales, uh, whether or not the council warden scheme, uh, which he's seen operating in Woolwich, uh, will be extended to other town centres? I think when we introduced it, we said that we would review it. Obviously, COVID-19 has, has kind of put a bit of a hiatus in that because we haven't actually had the wardens throughout that period doing the job that we, we contracted them to do. Um, they were very flexible, um, but the whole model works by um, them um, dealing with the fines and taking the majority of the fines and paying us back the surplus so that there is no cost to the council. I think we have to run it a bit further to test that the model works before we look at rolling it out but but early days are very positive so um, I'm expecting it to happen bar any major catastrophes but you know before Covid hit it was very early days and it was working very well and it started to work very well again so by the end of the year we should have a view about whether we can roll out elsewhere. Okay thank you very much. Um, now uh, moving on to uh, speed cameras we've got uh, a request here for a speed camera. Can the council put in speed cameras on their own, Jackie? Um, no, we can't. Um, it's a very complicated scenario. Um, some roads are TFL roads. TFL flatly refused to put any more in. Uh, we've had all of this issue in um, John Wilson Street where we have a particular problem. Um, and it goes on and on and on. But the, the, the definitive answer is no. Um, 
speed cameras are, are on the roads that are TFL roads, are the domain of TFL. We even said, can we put one in and operate it on your behalf? And the answer was no to that. So um, I'm, I, I'm afraid that it, it's a kind of police TFL matter. Uh, where there are our own roads, we, we, we don't operate them. They, speeding is still, um, even with move it traffic offences cameras, speeding is still something that is a police matter. It's not delegated to the council. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so, um, moving on to uh, culture, we've got uh, a number of questions that have come through uh, on Facebook. Um, I'm going to possibly make a few first of all. Um, so, people have been asking why it is that Black Lives Matter and General Jordan Square. Uh, by supporting Black Lives Matter, we are not saying other, other lives don't matter because they do. However, the, the recent events that are happening around the world has highlighted that black people are suffering more injustice within the world, within, within our society these days. And by us putting Black Lives Matter in General Gordon Square, is showing visibility that we are committed to work with our black communities of this borough and make sure that they are valued as any other residents, as any other human being within this borough. Okay, thank you. And I guess just to emphasize, um, I think what Adele said, we have done a piece of work with the Ronnie Mead Trust to an independent organization. who have looked at a whole range of different areas from housing to education and unemployment. And there's a difficult report to read because when you read it, it's absolutely clear areas, the outcomes for our black residents are simply not good enough. And that requires us to have the courage to say that we're going to take tackle that injustice and do uh, do something about it. So it isn't just tokenism or some kind of gesture. Actually, many people have written in to say that they uh, are pleased that we've demonstrated solidarity. But prior to COVID, we really tried to work to deal with those underlying issues. And we're going to obviously be continuing uh, with that work. And the most horrendous thing I think about now has been that COVID has absolutely shone light on all of those injustices that we already knew existed in the city and exacerbated uh, those problems. And equality and diversity uh, are, are never going to be as important as they are now. And coming out of this crisis, I hope that all of us can work together to create a fairer bridge where we have less uh, inequality and that gap is reducing uh, and not widening. Uh, we've answered the question. Uh, Danny, uh, can, I, can I add to that, please, if you don't mind? Yeah. Social media in the matter. Um, and you can appreciate there are um, quite a lot of... Jackie, sorry. Really. Matter. Can you not hear me? No, that's clear now. Okay. Um, Black Lives Matter does not mean that the organisation and the people behind the movement are saying Black Lives Matter more than anybody else. They're saying Black Lives Matter, and um, you know, which is rather unnecessary. And I think nobody needs to be threatened by a basic premise, premise that equality and justice for everybody is what we're trying to achieve so it doesn't mean you know one community over another it means equity justice and equality for everybody and, and i see nothing for anybody to be threatened to in that okay thank you very much jackie um now we've got a, a question here from uh, greenwich theatre who i know is suffering um and uh, i guess i just need to Look into this offline. We are trying to do everything we can to support our voluntary and community sector groups and people uh, that we have good relationships with. Um, just to sort of be clear in terms of the challenge that the council faces at this point in time, uh, we anticipate that COVID is going to cost us around £50 million in relation to the cost that we're bearing as well as uh, the income that we've lost. Uh, so far, we've had £17 million. Pounds uh, from the government. So that leaves us uh, with a gap of £33 million uh, to find. And at the start of this crisis, the government said they'd absolutely uh, stand shoulder to shoulder with local councils 
uh, and we need them to absolutely confirm that, step up to the plate uh, and do what was said, because unless we uh, absolutely have that money, we won't be able to support organisations doing great things uh, in the borough. I'm really proud of all the work that we've done with the voluntary sector in Greenwich, uh, and we hope it will continue, uh, because it's proved to be absolutely vital uh, in this service. Um, <clears throat> we've got here um, a question from Suki, uh, which is uh, certainly well known. Suki, uh, Jackie, uh, Danny and Adele, are you looking uh, for support from additional home care providers who may be not on our existing framework? Um, we've got a number of employed staff in Greenwich who are ready to go. Um, if you can send through those details, Suki, or send those to our uh, adult social care uh, teams, because I definitely know that there's enormous work going on in that area to provide all of the care that people need uh, post-COVID. Uh, post now, um, a question from uh, Jackie Stewart, I think. Um, in the Greenwich online newsletter uh, of the 15th of June, uh, you made reference to launching uh, a consultation on the new Equalities Charter, uh, which will be open to a range of individuals. Uh, could you tell us more about that charter and how we can take part in the process? Adele? So, uh, one of the first things when I, I became elected, I was working with, uh, I, I called a conference call with all the community and voluntary sector. A lot of, a lot of the BME organisation had mentioned that and disability organization that they want to be part of the decision making regarding policy. So we, we came up with the idea of putting a charter out there for consultation. So our voluntary sector, residents, individuals, community groups can say what they want to see regarding equality and equity that happens within the council. So the charter is going to be going out for consultation, hopefully end of this week, early next week. And every individual organization, voluntary sector, community group will have the, the chance to say what they want to see within the charter around equalities, how they want to see the council operate for diversity and social justice for all our residents. So please be keep an eye out on our newsletters, on our Twitter feed for the uh, consultation. And the more people that do it, the more, more information we can have in it and it will be something that is done as a community, as one, one unit, which will help us move forward in a better direction. Absolutely, and I was really proud this morning actually to wake up uh, and find that Time Out London, uh, which people know is a very famous um, magazine and listing to cover uh, a range of uh, social activities across uh, the capital and indeed the world, uh, have published pictures of our crossings and said um, that in their view, uh, the Royal Borough of Greenwich is fast becoming a beacon of diversity and inclusivity in this city, uh, which I thought was an absolutely amazing thing to read. And long may that uh, long may that continue. Uh, now, yeah, just to sorry, Dan, just to add as well, the, for, I'm just uh, just double check the charter consultation will go live today. So that's good, great news for all of us. Okay, great. Well, we look forward to everybody. Uh, getting involved. Now, uh, a couple of Parks questions. One uh, from an old teacher of mine, Mr. Stubbs, who's been harassing me on Twitter, if I may say so. Uh, I hope you're well, Mr. Stubbs. He'd like uh, to know when the car park at Oxley's uh, and Jack Woods uh, is reopening. Uh, I have encouraged him to walk, uh, but uh, he's uh, intent uh, on driving. So Adele, do you know when that car park is reopening? We, we, we are working closely with uh, our local parks in the borough and we're due to co social distancing is a main problem. And once we open parks, people influx in large numbers into parks with their cars and it makes social di distancing really, really difficult. And due to public health, we at the moment, we are keeping car parks closed. We are reviewing it as we go week by week and hopefully it should be not soon, but not in the long future, it should be uh, reopened, but it all down to social distancing and making sure that people understand the social distancing around it. It's difficult when you get 10, 20, 30 cars parking and they're all jumping out in front of each other and makes it really difficult for everybody else that's, that's shielding and trying to use our park in a safe way. Okay, great, thank you very much. Now there's another couple of questions coming, just a few, 
uh, different subjects. So I'll pick these up quickly. Um, we've got Shola, uh, who's asking about um, day centres uh, in Greenwich for older people. Now, at the moment, Shola, I'm afraid, day centres are still closed. Uh, need to be uh, closed due to uh, coronavirus. Um, but rest assured that our team are working with everyone who would normally attend a day centre uh, to help them with a whole range uh, of activities. Um, Wings Parking, uh, Wings is the contractor that we use for uh, enforcement of parking on housing estates. Um, that will uh, continue, uh, I believe, Jackie, is that, uh, is there a bit about Wings? Sorry, Jackie, you're just on mute there. Um, there was a report that, that came from the Cabinet member from Housing um, before COVID about some changes that were being planned um, to, to move from wings, um, to, to put things more in line with, with on-street parking uh, and CPZs, etc. But that was all delayed because of COVID. So I'm expecting that to kind of resurrect itself probably about September. Um, probably will have a bit of a run in uh, um, because it requires consultation and a whole load of uh, road traffic orders to get put in place uh, to make it possible. So I think the earliest that any change will happen will probably be April 21. Um, but certainly there are some plans to change, but it will carry on for now. Okay. Uh, now, Jackie, we've also got a very specific question from you from Cliff. It says, Dear Jackie, can you please let me know why, uh, under your leadership, we have so many people uh, drinking at the College Town Centre with no enforcement action being taken place at all? Is Cliff right or wrong? Cliff's very wrong. There's a lot of enforcement action taking place. Um, we're issuing community protection notices, we're issuing all sorts of notices. Um, a lot of that population is quite difficult because they are vulnerable um, and, and we, we have a team that's working out with them. Um, but actually we are enforcing on a daily basis um, and we use the police where necessary. Um, I think there's a lot of extra drinking that's not coming from the usual suspects at the moment because the pubs are closed so there are a lot of people that are sitting and drinking and we are dealing with them the volume is quite high but the um saying nothing is happening is just not true um you know i can give the figures to prove that thank you and cliff please rest assured this is work extremely seriously and we've done a whole range of things including the space protection orders that Jackie has led to make sure that that work, that these things are safe and enjoyable uh, for everyone uh, to use. Um, so that's that. Now, Dennis Greenberg's come back um, about the depth of the cleanup. Uh, my same answer applies, Dennis, I think, which is the waterways uh, we think of the environment agency. Uh, we'll try uh, and pick that up. Shona uh, has also asked when is Crossrail uh, opening uh, in Abbey Wood? Um, and the honest answer is not soon enough. I mean, the station's ready, um, and I've been speaking to the Crossrail team, and we've been in this crisis, are uh, uh, doing the final bits to link all of those systems together. Uh, and now moved into a new phase. Um, I know down in Woolwich, they've had uh, a practice evacuation of the station. Um, so things are really moving. We absolutely hope uh, that Crossrail is going to be part of uh, the recovery that we all need uh, from the coronavirus crisis. Um, so that will be uh, so soon. Um, so we had a question um, from uh, uh, asking about um, the incident in Bristol uh, with the removal of the statue. Now, Adele, do we have any statues in Greenwich that we're aware of that are in controversy? At the moment, we are carrying a review out with the Heritage Trust, and uh, hopefully we haven't got anything at the moment that I'm aware of, but the review hasn't been completed. It's, pro it's been progressed, and there will be a report be submitted to us very shortly from officers on that. And then we will look into taking the necessary steps where it's needed. Okay. and. Obviously, um, I would say if anyone is concerned about 
particular statues. Uh, I've had some emails on road names. Uh, please send them through uh, and we will pass those to the team uh, and make sure that is, uh, is, is, is taken into account moving forward um, because clearly uh, this is a very sensitive issue and a very sensitive time. We're also working with the Mayor of London and the review uh, that he has set up uh, to address uh, the issue uh, of statues and memorials uh, across the city. Um, now there's a question here about um, plans to maintain the trees uh, in Greenwich Park Street. Um, uh, I'm not quite sure. Uh, Greenwich Park Street, I think, if you maybe mean uh, inside the parks, I think this question is from Lynn, and uh, that is a question uh, for the Royal Parks. Uh, I'm a board member of the Royal Parks, so if you do send that, uh, I'll try and get back to you on that one. Um, we've also um, had uh, a question in here uh, from Pete, uh, Pete, um, Pete Cunningham. Uh, Pete, having read your question, it's a kind of, it's a very detailed casework question, so I don't want to go into it, but if you could drop us your email uh, through, uh, then we'll be able to pick, uh, pick that issue up uh, for you. Now I think uh, that brings me to the end uh, of all of the questions uh, that we've had uh, in. So could I, um, I'll give everyone a couple of minutes if you have anything else to, uh, to add those on to either Facebook or Twitter where we'll pick them up uh, and maybe then just have some final uh, thoughts and comments uh, from Jackie and Adele as we draw to a close. Uh, Jackie, should we start with you? Um. I think it's been a long, difficult period for all of us. Um, and I think we're slowly coming out of lockdown into some degree of normality, although I'm not sure what the new normal will be for anybody. And I don't think any of us are, which is, is the fairly scary th thing. Um, I think the message is that I know people are feeling a bit stir crazy. I certainly ha am. And, um, I can't get my appointment with my hairdressers until the 18th of July, which means I have to carry on looking like a wild woman for a lot longer. Um, but, um, you know, I think we all have to be patient in allowing things to open safely. And I think safely is, is the appropriate word. Um, I've seen some very good behaviour and I've seen some quite bad behaviour. And I think the responsibility for making sure that there isn't a kind of worse lockdown further along the road, um, if we get a second peak of the virus, is on all of us. Um, I think young people are finding it particularly hard with not being at school and not being, you know, out with their friends and still not being able to do um, nightclubs and venues that, that, you know, they would normally attend. And there will be a a try at doing things in parks and open spaces. All I have to say is please don't do that. Um, you know, um, we will not look kindly and neither will the police on unlicensed music events and it will be shut down um, because it's just not allowed. So just people need to be patient with the kind of gentle uneasing of things that I know it's hard. It's hard for all of us. You know, some of us haven't seen that our families for months, but you know, if we are going to get through this together, um, you know, as a nation, as a borough, um, and make sure that people are safe, that more people don't die, and, and that we don't have to face a more serious lockdown um, in the winter, then we all have to do our bit. And, and I think that's really important. So, you know, please bear with us. We will do all we can to keep you safe. We just you, need you to do what you need to do in order to make that happen as well. Okay, thank you very much. Joe? I completely agree with all, everything that Jackie has said, and I probably would add as well a big thank you to all our volunteers across the borough. They have been doing amazing work helping our residents, delivering food, preventing services, picking up medication from the hospital, taking dogs out for a walk. A huge, huge thank you to all of them. They've been amazing, the backbone of the borough making a move forward. Also, I'll, I would encourage our residents when they're using our parks, do take your litter home with you. You know, do, you know don't rely that the, that the bins are going to be empty. They will be, but it will be easy as well if you helped us out and took your rubbish with you. 
and I uh, encourage everybody to take up cycling. I'm looking to take up cycling. I know Danny's a keen cycling a man himself. And we can, you know, leave our cars behind and make our parks more friendly instead of chalking it up with cars and pollution. So, like I said earlier on, big thank you to all our residents for what they've been doing to support us as well. Things are getting back to normal slowly and we will get there truly together. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Just picking up on that cycling point there, I know we've got uh, some questions in uh, from uh, Ollie and others about uh, the bids that we've made uh, to TfL. I just want to say to people, look, we've published a report that outlines what we've bid for. We try, we will try and bring uh, more details in a, in a human way uh, to those uh, schemes. But obviously, everyone has been working flat out on writing those bids, uh, which can be for the four million pound uh, application. So. It really has been uh, a balance to try and get that done in the shortest possible time, get get the schemes implemented that we've been doing. Um, and we we are aware that people keep asking for it. Uh, but the most important thing, I think, is that hopefully those bids themselves are well written to get the money to make uh, that we need. Um, so uh, uh, a final one here uh, from uh, Brenda. Um, Asked um, about the increased use of parks and litter increasing. Uh, well, I think uh, Brenda, all I, Brenda, all I would say uh, is kind of picking up on what uh, Adele has said. Uh, put simply, uh, if you can take a picnic to the park, you can take your rubbish home with you. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, if we don't, uh, we know Jack is going to be chasing us around the park on the uh, to enforce those rules, so uh, none of us, uh, none of us want that to happen, uh, because actually Jackie's got uh, lots of other things uh, to do. Uh, and finally, just to finish and say thank you to Shola, uh, who has said a huge thank you to uh, the council for their rapid support uh, to the coronavirus crisis, uh, and the Com Connecting Communities Alliance has received very positive feedback from the president. So we're really happy uh, that that has been received. Our next uh, session, and I think it could be our last, uh, the first round of Ask Funny Sessions, is uh, going to be on Wednesday, the 15th of July. Uh, and for that, I'll be joined by Councillor Miranda Williams, who's our President of Health and Adult Social Care. Um, so, very busy at the moment uh, fighting the virus and how they uh, work on those issues. Uh, and Councillor Matt Morrow, who's our new Cabinet Member for Children including in school. So please uh, do uh, start getting your questions ready for Matt and Miranda. We look forward to seeing you then for the next round of Ask Greenwich. Uh, have a lovely day. Uh, enjoy the weather. Uh, apply the sun cream. Uh, stay safe. Bye. Bye.